we will now solve slope deflection using the double integration method. The requirements for this problem is to solve for the deflection at x is equal to 2 meters and 7 meters from the left end of the beam together with the maximum deflection. We assume EI is constant. I have here some steps in solving the problem. The first step is to obtain the single moment equation. The second step is to integrate the single moment equation twice to obtain the slope and deflection equation. Then the third step is to evaluate the constants of integration. The fourth step is to solve for the unknown. Okay, so we move on step number one. Perhaps this is the most interesting and most confusing step to solving the problem. If we do not know how to obtain the single moment equation of the beam, I made a separate video. The link is provided on the description below. To those who are interested, you can view it for reference. So as we can observe, the single moment equation contains of a pointed bracket instead of using the usual parentheses. This symbol plays an important role to the analysis. It will remind us for restriction that every time we perform the operation inside this pointed bracket and it will yield the negative answer the value does not exist. We will now equate the single moment equation to its equivalent that is the second derivative of y with respect with respect to x multiplied by its flexure rigidity that is ei the product of modules of elasticity e and the moment of inertia i okay so we call this the euler bernoulli equation we will integrate this equation twice the first integration will give us the slope equation and for the second integration we will give us the deflection equation. We will now integrate both sides of the equation. On the left side of the equation, differentiation and integration will cancel out. What is left on the left side of the equation is equal to EI multiplied by dy over dx. On the right side of the equation, we just apply the power formula. The integral of u raised to n, differential of u, is just equal to u raised to n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus the constant of integration. For the first term of the equation, u is equal to x, then the exponent that is equal to n is equal to 1. In the second term of the equation, u is equal to x minus 3, and the exponent of this value is also equal to n that is equal to 1. The result if we integrate is x raised to n plus 1 that is equal to 1 plus 1 equal to 2 divided by n plus 1 which is also equal to 2 since n is equal to 1. Then u is equal to x minus 3 raised to n plus 1 which is equal to 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2. Then we divide by n plus 1 that is also equal to 2 plus the constant of integration that is c. But since we have two constants of integration, let the first constant of integration equal to c1 and for the second constant of integration that is equal to c2. We integrate the slope equation to obtain the deflection equation. On the left side of the equation, differentiation and integration will again cancel out because those are inverse processes. On the right side of the equation, the first term x that is equal to u, at this time n is equal to 2. On the second term of the equation, that is x minus 3, and n is also equal to 2. So the result, if we integrate the equation, x which is equal to u raised to n plus 1 that is 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 divided by n plus 1 then for the second term of the equation that is x minus 3 equal to u raised to n plus 1 that is 2 plus 1 is n is equal to 2 then we divide by n plus 1 that is also equal to 3 the integral of a constant the independent variable is equal to differential of x is just equal to constant multiplied by x so that is just equal to c1 multiplied by x then we add the second constant of integration, we simplify the equation, and we solve for this value that is equal to 2.5x cubed minus 4 multiplied by x minus 3 raised to 3 plus c1x plus c2. Do not expand this term of equation and simplify because we will never know if the value inside the pointed bracket is negative or positive if we already simplify the equation. Remember, the restriction we learned before using this pointed bracket. Then next, we will evaluate the constant of using boundary condition 
x is equal to 0, and y is equal to 0, x is equal to n, and y is equal to 0. Since y is the deflection and x is any distance from point A of the beam, at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to n, that is the location of support reactions, therefore deflection is 0 or y is 0 at the locations of those support reactions. Since x and y is involved, we pick the deflection equation which contains x and y values. So this is our deflection equation. It will contain x and y values. Since our boundary condition contains of x and y, we pick the deflection equation to evaluate for the constants of integration. We substitute the value of x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 to our deflection equation. So if we replace x to 0 and y is equal to 0, here is the equation. So the second term of the equation 0 minus 3 will not exist because 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Then on the third term of the equation 0, 0 times c1 is equal to 0. Therefore, from this equation, c2 is equal to 0. The next, we will evaluate the constant of integration c1. We will make use of the second boundary condition at x is equal to 8 meters and y is equal to 0. So since x and y is involved in the calculation, we again pick the deflection equation. We replace the value of y into 0 and x into 8. For the second term of the equation, 8 minus 3 is positive 5. So therefore, the second term of the equation will exist. The third term of the equation is C1 times 8. So from this equation, we can be able to solve for C1 and that is equal to negative 97.5 kilonewton meter square. Since we have kilonewton and cubic meter from this equation, then we divide that by meter. So meter and meter will cancel out. What is left is kilonewton meter square. Then step number four, we solve for the unknown. Actually, slope and deflection anywhere along the length of the beam can now be easily obtained. You just substitute the value of the corresponding distance where you want the deflection and slope on the beam to the slope and deflection equation. And you can be able to solve for the unknown slope and deflection that is needed. It just happened that what is needed is slope and deflection at x is equal to 2 meters and 7 meters together with the maximum deflection. Okay, so we can obtain the slope at x is equal to 2 meters and 7 meters by using the slope equation. Here is our slope equation. We just substitute the value of x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 7. Then we will simplify c1 is equal to negative 97. 0.5 kilonewton meter square. From this equation, we can be able to solve for dy over dx that is negative 67.5 kilonewton meter square over ei that is at x is equal to 2 meters. At x is equal to 7 meters, we just replace x with 7 to our slope equation. Then c1 into 97.5, we simplify the equation. And from that equation, we can be able to solve for dy over dx or the slope at x is equal to 7 meters, that is equal to 78 kilonewton meter square divided by EI. Okay, so next, we solve for the deflection. For the deflection, we just substitute value of 2 and 7 meters. C1 is negative 97.5 into our de deflection equation. And we can be able to obtain the values of those deflections for x is equal to 2 meters and 7 meters respectively. So here is our deflection equation. We know that c1 is equal to negative 97.5. We replace the value of c1 with negative 97.5 and x into 2 meters and 7 meters respectively. For x is equal to 2 meters, here is the result, a negative value inside the pointed bracket. So the second term of the equation for the deflection at x is equal to 2 meters will not exist. Therefore, if we simplify the equation that is only equal to the first term and third term of the equation, if we add those, that is equal to negative 175 kilonewton cubic meter divided by EI, that is at x is equal to 2 meters. We know that 2.5 
is in kilonewton. 2 is in meter, so that is kilonewton cubic meter. Already. So, that is what we can observe as unit of our answer that is in kilonewton cubic meter. So, at x is equal to 7 meters, we'll just replace the value of x with 7, then 7 to the second term, then 7 to the third term of the equation that is multiplied by C1. Then we simplify that is equal to negative 81 kilonewton cubic meter over EI that is at x is equal to 7 meters. You can observe that 7 minus 3 is positive. So the second term of the equation for the deflection at x is equal to 7 meters will exist. So here is now the deflection of the beam. As you can observe, the negative slope at x is equal to 2 meters is downward to the right. The positive slope at x is equal to 7 meters is upward to the right. So that is the difference between positive and negative slopes of the tangents drawn on the elastic curve of the beam. So at x is equal to 2 meters, this is the deflection that is downward with respect to the neutral axis. So that is why our answer is negative. And for x is equal to 7 meters, it is also downward with respect to the neutral axis. So it is also negative value. So that is negative 81 and negative 175 kilonewton cubic meter divided by EI. How about the maximum deflection? So here is the deflection of the beam. The point of maximum deflection, the tangent that can be drawn at that point has a slope equal to zero. We will take advantage about that. The slope of tangent line at the location of maximum deflection is equal to zero. What are we going to do is we will or return back to our slope equation. We will equate that to zero. And if we can observe, here is now our slope equation. If we will equate this to zero, the left side is equal to zero, dy over dx is equal to zero. That is the slope, the tangent line. At the point of maximum deflection, we can observe that the only unknown in the equation is x. That value of x will give us the location of maximum deflection from reference point A of the beam. So, if we try to perform the analysis here, guys, or we can enter this into a powerful calculator, then we can solve for x and that is equal to 3.718 meters. So, that is the location of maximum deflection from left end of the beam. If we now substitute x is equal to 3.718 meters to the deflection equation, we can be able to solve for the maximum deflection and it is equal to negative 235.5 kilonewton cubic meter divided by EI. That is, at the location of maximum deflection, x is equal to 3.718 meters. As you can observe, that is also negative because if we try to figure out, we know that maximum deflection is also downward with respect to the neutral axis. To those who want a copy of this file in PDF as reference, like and subscribe, comment down below your email app and I will send it to you. Thank you.